everyone in this video i'm going to talk about the errors in writing my focus will be on the seven most common errors in academic writing what are they the errors are misspelling mispunctuating miscapitalizing the subject verb discord fragment the run on and the comma splice by knowing these hopefully you can recognize the errors you usually do and thus prevent from doing it again in the future so in this video i'll try to elaborate the definition the characteristics the solutions with clear examples now let's see the first four errors which are more on technical problems in writing the first one is misspelling misspelling is the wrong spell of the words well most non-native speakers might have difficulty to differentiate uh, between the American or British English words. Even the native ones will still also make this kind of error. Okay, here are the examples. Okay, as you can see in the first two examples here, you can uh, find the misplace of vowel I and E, E and I. Okay, it's common in the English words. But usually the position of whether I comes preceding the E or E preceding the I, it's uh, becoming a problem. And then this point, you can see the problem here. You have double S and single P instead of a single S and a double P. The same as tomorrow. You should have single M and double R. And the last one is pronunciation. This is the results of having the verb pronounce. P R O N O U N C E, and then in the noun form, it should be without the second O. Okay, pronunciations. Well, how to solve this kind of problem? You can consult the dictionaries, or if you are using the office, like the Word document, the Excel, or the PowerPoint PPT, like this, you can turn your English language and spell checker on. So, let's see the correct ones. Yes, so that is the correct spelling of the words. Now let's move on to the next error, which is mispunctuating. Mispunctuating is the wrong use of the punctuation. We know there are several different kinds of punctuations. The period, the comma, the colon, the semicolon, the exclamation mark, the question marks, etc. Uh, usually, when it is put in the wrong place, it can prevent the readers to understand the meaning. And thus, there will be a misunderstanding, which we need to avoid. Here are the examples. The steps are pre-writing, and then here you can see the semicolon, and then organizing, semicolon, drafting, semicolon, and polishing, exclamation mark. So these are totally wrong. For the list like this, you don't need to use the semicolon, but instead you can just use comma. And since this is not a exclamation this is not an order this is just declarative sentence so you can just use a full stop instead or a period at the end of the sentence so it's become like this this is the correct one and then the third error is miscapitalizing miscapitalizing is the wrong use of the capital letters sometimes people are quite confused to use the lowercase or the uppercase letters it is clear that in the beginning of sentence you have to start with the capital letters and then in some uh, abbreviation so here is the example Sumatra is to the west of West Kalimantan it is across the sea the first west is showing the directions okay and then West Kalimantan is actually the name of one province in Indonesia since this is the name of a province, just like the name of the city, the name of the country, you need to capitalize uh, the W there in West Kalimantan, okay? But not the previous West, because it's just showing uh, directions. And then after the semicolon, if it is not the name of person or the pronoun I, you don't need to capitalize. So it must be in lowercase letter. So it should be like this. Alright, now we move on to the last error in sentence writing. In this part, the subject verb score is more on the grammatical problems in writing, yeah? 
the subject and the verb do not concord or agree to each other. For example, the teacher stops talking and everybody seems to understand. Okay, according to the rule in present simple, uh, when the subjects are plural, it must be followed with verb without the suffix s or es. While if the subject is singular, it must be followed with the verb added with suffix s or es. So here the teachers are plural, so you cannot use stop with an s, and everybody refers to an individual. Therefore, the verb must use s. So this is the correct one. So here are the first four errors, mostly in technical and grammatical problems. Now we are going to see the last three most common errors in writing, which are usually done unconsciously by the writers. The fifth error is fragment. We know that fragments means parts. So the problem is the missing of one important part in a sentence to complete the meaning. What are those parts? The first part is missing the subject of the sentence. This usually happens when the sentence starts with an adverb or prepositional phrase like this example. The writer wrongly thinks that the subject is in Bali, while in fact it doesn't have any. So how to solve this? Simply add a subject or noun in front of the verb. So let's see the corrections here. In the first correction, the subject is Bali, not in Bali, because in Bali is an adverbial position, not the subject position. Okay, now let's see the second correction. In the next correction, the new words is added. So here, the subject is the main city. Okay, now let's go to the next type of fragment, which is missing a verb. This mostly happens when the sentence contains adjectives, like this example. You cannot just put adjective directly after the noun, or subject directly with a complement. You need a verb. So the correction is either adding the verb or the linking verb to be. We will see in the corrections here. So in the first correction, the verb get is added and in the second correction the linking verb or the to be are is added before the adjective tired now let's go to see the last type of the fragment which is missing the independent clause this error usually happens in a complex sentence that should consist of independent and dependent clauses the problem is mostly done when the clause which begins with a conjunction stand by itself and thus missing a complete meaning. There are two ways to solve this problem. First way is of course by adding the missing part, in this case the independent clause. And secondly, the way is by taking the conjunction out. Make it a simple sentence. So here are the correct sentences. In this first sentence, we can see that an independent clause is added. The independent clause is, parents must be available. So now the sentence has a complete meaning. Now let's go to see the second correct sentence. In the second correct sentence, the conjunction because is just simply omitted. So now you have correct sentences. And these are the three types of fragments. Now. The last two errors are quite the same in sense of combining two sentences incorrectly. First is called the run-on sentence. In this case, the two simple sentences are joined together without proper signals. For example, the car is extremely expensive, they will not purchase it. This sentence is wrong because actually there are two sentences here. The first one is the car is extremely expensive and the second sentence is they will not purchase it so there's not any proper signals here to combine these two sentences there are several ways to solve this problem which can be concluded with the help of conjunction and punctuations there are four alternatives of corrections here that i put here the first one is 
by adding the conjunction so so we make it two independent clauses and then the second one is by adding the conjunction since in front of the first clause and put a comma and then the third correction is by adding semicolon so you have two independent clauses joined together with a semicolon uh, the second clause has a closely related meaning with the first one and the last correction is simply by dividing this sentence into two completely different sentences okay just put a full stop after the first sentence so here you have two sentences instead of one okay so these are the corrections for this kind of run-on sentence now we've come to the last error in sentence writing which is quite the same with the previous one which is called the comma splices so in this type of error two simple sentences are incorrectly joined together with only a comma look at this example the house is really cheap comma they will purchase it the sentence is wrong because it actually consists of two simple sentences the first one is the house is really cheap and the second one is they will purchase it putting comma there is wrong because it still doesn't show the relation between the first and the second sentence here so this kind of sentence must be avoided how to solve this problem actually it's the same solution as the previous error the run on sentence so it must use the conjunction and punctuation so these are more or less the same ways to solve like the previous ones the first one is by adding the conjunction so to divide the first clause and the second clause right clause so here we are talking about clauses not sentences and then the second correction here is by adding the conjunction because in front of the first clause so the first part of this sentence is the dependent clause while the second one becomes the only independent clause the third and the fourth corrections are using the punctuation and number three semicolon is used so the second clause is closely related to the first clause while in number four you simply divide these two simple sentences using the full stop so here you have definitely two simple sentences not one all right so this is the end of our discussions on the errors in sentence writing hopefully it helps thank you